Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Joost Appelboom and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of Penfluencers. If you don't want to miss out on a video, subscribe to our YouTube channel now. This week we're going to have a look at the Top 3 Pens of Michael from Tamanuri Studio. Michael has mastered some wonderful Japanese techniques for pen decoration and creates tiny pen sized works of art. Of course, he will show some of these in the video. And make sure to check out his Instagram for more of his work. Hi, I'm Michael and welcome to Tamanuri Studio. Actually, not the studio but my living room and it's not a video on my channel but I was invited by Apple Boom to share with you my three top pens or three favorite pens or three special pens so uh, I'm going to but I'm going to abuse a little bit the formula of this uh, of this series and show you a little more than three pens actually there will be several groups of three pens so there will be three Urushi pens and three non Urushi pens but amongst them uh, there will be three important pens for me and three pens which I consider really good uh, or great and I love writing with them and I use them a lot so they are my best pens at the moment because this list changes a lot okay now I think I will start with uh, pens which are important for me and uh, first of them the oldest one happens to be an Urushi now because it used not it was not Urushi uh, just uh, two years ago. Uh, it's a humble Parker Frontier. Uh, I've seen that this pen appeared on several uh, top three pens of different uh, authors here on Apple Boom, uh, but not such Parker Frontier. This one was modified by me and it was one of the first pens I modified and uh, I just lacquered the barrel of the pen. I will try to, to show it. Mm, I hope it looks good. And I lacquered several Parker Frontiers and all of them were my training pens. But at the same time, this pen was one of the first pens I ever used. The first one I remember was one of the heroes and I used them at primary school. But uh, later came Parker Frontier and I remember this pen quite well. And I remember that I had a flighter. Why this pen is important for me, there are some more here. So I will show you my initial venture into the Rushi world. And here is Ishima, and this one is Tamanuri on metallic leaf, as far as I remember it was silver. And it was my first Maki E try with a dragon. So, uh, it was the first pen I decided to collect, to, to, uh, to catch them all, to get them all. There are like 20 of different uh, finishes of Parker Frontier, so different colors of uh, plastic barrel, different nibs and some metal versions. So, Flighters, like in Parkers, uh, and uh, I almost got them all. I lacked like three of them, but then I noticed that it makes little sense. Uh, I'm not a collector. I will. I never collect. I, I decided not to collect pens, but to use them. So I decided to uh, lacquer some of the pens I got uh, and give away most of others. I still have like 10 of Frontiers in rarer designs, so I will probably put them uh, for sale at some moment, but still this pen as a model is quite an important thing for me. And it's now an Urushi pen. Uh, another important pen for me was another pen connected with my fountain pen history, and uh, it was the pen I bought like 10 years ago, maybe maybe more, it was like 13 years ago. And there was a moment uh, I was, I had a 
habit of buying myself a present, a gift, after each huge or important project I finished with success. So once it was a watch, it was a pen, and once it was a fountain pen. And this fountain pen was a Graf von Faber-Castell classic ebony. Uh, and I still like it. I used to write with it for like half a year and then I threw it into the drawer and it stayed there for next eight years probably until my interest in fountain pens reappeared and exploded several years ago. And it was the first pen I, I started, it started, it kickstarted my fountain pen addiction. Uh, as, as it is. <laughs> uh, I digged it out uh, from the drawer, I started to write with it and it writes really well. I had to correct the nib, I had to clean it, but uh, it is still a great pen and I use it from time to time. Not extremely often, but often enough not to sell it. Uh, it's a quite a heavy pen especially with the cup on, because cup and section are metal and the female here is metal too, only the barrel in the middle is uh, wood. Uh, they have a tendency to split here, but it's just a matter of a little bit of glue to glue it back uh, and I was forced to do this with my pen. Uh, nips are very good, those nips, this one is slightly older, I checked newer uh, Graf von faber is produced now and the nibs seem to be more rigid. I don't know if it's a matter of uh, use and abuse of this nib or just uh, they changed something. As far as I know Bock makes uh, nibs for faber Castell and Graf von faber Castell, as this Graf von faber Castell brand is just a luxury brand of faber Castell and uh, it's very pleasant to write with and I like it. Last pen from the list of important pens is another Urushi pen and it's uh, a group, a model of pen. I will show you one example of this pen which is already lacquered. It, I don't have unlacquered version right now and I'm waiting for another shipment from Nabi and uh, it's modest. It's modest of wet and twice. And it's made in Belgium and it's a handmade pen, maybe not handmade but on a lathe, but still. And this one here uh, is made for one of my favorite customers. Uh, now it's red and as you can see there is not even, I, don't, I didn't even put the nib on yet. And it's a very simple pen, flat top, with slightly bigger diameter of a cup and with perfect, for me perfect, but uh, it seems that this shape of section is very good for most people I know. So hourglass section, which easily adapts to different grips and to different uh, ways of holding the pen. It's quite long and uh, diameter of it, in the narrowest place and the widest place is perfect for most people I know and it's very popular pen uh, in my uh, production. Uh, I cooperated with Nabi on several different models but to tell you the truth this one is absolutely my favorite one to work with. and. Uh, even not in Urushi, I would definitely get one if I were you. So, modest from wet and wise. And now, let's move to another group of uh, three top pens. And this time, those pens are just uh, great. And uh, they are great at the moment. They, this list might change in a month or even a week. But I will start uh, in Italy, then go to Italy, and then go to Japan. So first of them will be the recent 
limited edition of uh, Scribo, Scribo Field, Scrittura, Scrittura Bolognese, as far as I remember. It's Oceano, a uh, fantastic resin and uh, acrylic resin, probably, and uh, with really great nibs. Uh, Scribo uses the same uh, machinery, maybe not actually Scribo, but Bok, who makes nibs for Scribo, uses the same machinery which was used for, uh, for Omas nibs. So there are flexible nibs, and this one has a flexible nib, uh, are uh, really good. And it's not a proper flexible nib as in vintage uh, pens, but it's flexible enough for my writing and for fast writing and for just comfortable using of slightly flexible nib. And this one is fine, I have another one. They are not very consistent in width because uh, uh, I have two finds and they are completely different, uh, but they are both uh, very pleasant to use. And the pen itself might be not very appealing, appealing in shape because it's uh, uh, Bulbo's shape here and here, so it might not be to your liking, but it's very comfortable, uh, even with this step here. But the section is so long and it's quite comfortable. It's very comfortable actually. And it's a piston filler and I found myself using it uh, almost every day since I bought it a month ago. And that's it, I think. Another pen from Italy was the pen I got from Tom Westerich and, uh, of Penboard TE and it's Leonardo Officina Italiana Tainan Pen Show 2019 Special Edition. This one is Ebonite with a silver, silver ring on the cup and in silver trim. And it's a sterling silver here. Uh, this, those two pieces like this ring here and the uh, clip, the typical Leonardo clip, uh, is uh, rhodium, rhodium plated probably. But this ring here is sterling silver and it is uh, the design copied from one of the uh, Tainan temples. It was a limited edition of 60 pens. 30 of them were made in ebonite, like this cherry ebonite, I hope it's visible. And uh, I like the material a lot, but what I did with another copy, because I got two of them, surprisingly, and I lacquered it with Urushi and sent back to Tom. Uh, so for some it might be a blasphemy to take a limited edition Leonardo in beautiful ebonite and lacquer it with Urushi and cover this beautiful ebonite completely with Urushi and in experimental technique, but still, uh, I did it. And this one is number 23 of 60. 28 of 60, the other one was 31, as far as I remember, and it's got a gold, uh, fine nib, rigid, nothing flexible here, with red ebonite feet. So quite fancy and, and I like it. And it's also inked right now and uh, I use it quite often. What is funny, when I show my pens to someone and this pen is one of the pens I carry with me most of the time. Uh, people find, um, most people find this pen very comfortable. Uh, it's big, it's, uh, it's very long, it's like, I don't remember, but it's, it's length of the Scribo field, so it, it's, it's a really big pen. Uh, but uh, people find it comfortable and people find uh, it writing very pleasantly. It's just a standard fine gold nib, but it writes really great. Uh, either it was uh, some magic done by Tom or Leonardo makes really good, not Leonardo, but actually Bok or Jova, uh, make very good nibs for them. And uh, it was another pen from Italy. And the last pen of my three top pens, the greatest pens I have, will be the pen which is also at the same time very important for me because it was my grail pen and I waited for it for 
nine months as far as I remember and it's a Nakaya it's Nakaya dorsal fin in Akatamanuri mm. look at this beauty uh, this pen uh, is uh, made of ebonite by hand and it starts its life as round pen but later those two fins you can see now are added by layering urushi and uh, charcoal powder which is called sumi, sumi, sumiko and after this process which takes probably around six months it's shaped again those fins are sanded and polished uh, and it's lacquered with a uh, sorry and it's lacquered with a akatamenuri technique akatamenuri technique is one of the most but general tamenuri techniques are one of the most popular techniques uh, uh, in urushi especially on pens and it's a technique where you lacquer the pen with one color and then cover it with a semi-translucent layer of uh, another urushi, different urushi. In this case it's a mixture of Kijiro and Shiwai urushi, so the underlayer is red and then it's covered with the mixture of Kijiro and Shiwai urushi. And is, then the pen is polished and in some areas, like those edges here, those edges on those fins and ends, uh, it's the red color from beneath the uh, final layer is much stronger. Okay. And uh, as I said, I waited for this pen for quite a long time, but uh, before it came uh, to me from Japan, I ordered another one and an another uh, dorsal fin this time in Midori Tamenuri and now I'm waiting around one year so 12 months uh, of waiting uh, for another uh, dorsal thin and I think it will come just after Christmas as usual with such situations this one has a broad nib and uh, it writes incredibly good as all Platinum and Nakaya nibs in my opinion I can show it even closer without losing focus. Yes, I can. So it's a it's a broad nib, and it's it writes like a dream. And well, it's hard. It's rigid, stiff. And uh, you can also order a soft nib or elastic nib or soft elastic nib in in fine and medium, or just uh, send your nib to a nib meister and modify it. Uh, to be Frank, those nibs, the Nakaya nibs and Platinum nibs, are my favorite nibs. And I have seven Platinum 3776 with this nib and three Nakayas, fourth one in the mail, and I will probably buy a little more. And I'm also transplanting those nibs from 3776 to my pants. Uh, and use them as eye droppers then and uh, but working on another solution and uh, I really like them really like them as you can see okay that's it thank you Apple Bomb for inviting me to to share my pens and my passion with you uh, please uh, visit my channel too for more information on Urushi and lacquering pens and and different techniques and just maybe some Japanese culture too and that's it so I will show them one once again in a group photo for you dominated by frontiers so we have Parker frontiers in a group photo one all in Urushi and all other pens I showed you today. It's a Scribo, Leonardo Ficina Italiana, Graf von Faber Castell, Wet and Wise, and Nakaya.
Thank you.